Are you ready to ride with the astronauts back to the moon? Or are you excited to spend more time in space? Well, in this video, we will discuss how close we are to achieving these dreams. Welcome, and you're watching Technology Zone, where the home of technology resides. Join us as we discover the features and other aspects of the new SpaceX designed spacesuit in this video. Before getting into the main character of this video, let's first talk about spacesuits. Spacesuits are similar to what they call miniature spacecraft, where people dress up their bodies in more than one layer of clothing. A distinct characteristic that spacesuits hold is their pressurized design. It is also togged out with reassuring life support, which is pretty much fantastic to wear, but if the suit fails its functions, then you're as good as toast. However, in the past records of spacesuits, no one has ever died of such a reason, but this doesn't mean we should settle for it. It is not a reassurance that current models will be of any level near the successful spacesuits of the past, whether it's for entering back into the Earth or extravehicular activities. But even provided the safety of the suits, astronauts haven't felt any satisfaction with the gear they were required to put on. Well good for these astronauts, as Elon Musk created a new technologically improved spacesuit to satisfy their needs and perhaps embarrass NASA. At this time, we are seeing more innovative versions of spacesuit designs and performances that we couldn't have imagined to be possible before. Since the SpaceX Dragon replaced the orange advanced crew survival suit, fondly dubbed the pumpkin suit, that space shuttle astronauts used before launching into orbit, SpaceX has developed a more form-fitting and lighter alternative. Doug Hurley and Bob Benkin, the astronauts who were the first to ride the Crew Dragon for the International Space Station, or the ISS, said that it was pretty simple to get on and off, and that it provided an enjoyable ride. The suits that the astronauts wear during takeoff and back-to-Earth trips are intended to protect them from heat, and they are meant to connect their chair umbilicals that transport oxygen and cold air in the event that the cabin loses pressure for whatever reason. If the capsule loses its pressure, the suits will be able to sustain the astronauts alive within the chamber for at least a good few days by providing them with safe air and keeping a sufficient amount of pressure to protect them from developing altitude sickness or anything much more serious. The work that concerns SpaceX's next-generation spacesuit for humans who will be venturing out to set foot on the surface of another planet or the moon is, however, the most exciting part of the project. The Polaris Initiative, announced earlier this year, is a type of hybridization of orbital spaceflight tourism and technological research. Its principal objective is to increase human spaceflight capacity quickly. Jared Isaacman, billionaire and inventor of Shift4 Transactions, built this in conjunction with SpaceX. Isaacman also sponsored and participated in SpaceX's first private crew Dragon launch. Polaris intends to be the inspiration for what was left off around last year. In spite of the fact that it will continue to have ties to St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital and will try to be of assistance to that institution, the primary focus of the Polaris initiative will be the advancement of several essential technologies that SpaceX will require in order to achieve its ultimate objective of spreading human civilization throughout our solar system. One of these essential technologies is the development of a spacesuit that is not only affordable but also dependable and user-friendly. This spacesuit would enable future astronauts to labor in the outer space vacuum outside of their ship's protection. This indicates that the new SpaceX EVA suits will showcase more technological advancement, which will enable the boarding astronauts to the Polaris Dawn to safely exit the pressurized cabin of the spacecraft in order to perform the very first commercial spacewalk. This spacewalk will take place at an approximate altitude of 500 kilometers above the Earth. A spokesman from a show made the announcement on Twitter and released a picture of many of the crew members checking out the costumes. As Isaacman mentioned, the new EVA spacesuits are modifications of the IVA suits that are currently in use. At this very moment, 
Most of his thoughts have been focused on the implications for SpaceX of the fact that they are developing EVA suits and spacecraft that are capable of landing on the Moon and Mars. They are becoming closer and closer to the present. Due to the fact that experts from the Polaris program said that constructing a base on the Moon or a city on Mars would need thousands of spacesuits, the creation of the suit and the implementation of the EVA are essential steps towards scaling the design of spacesuits for future long-endurance missions. SpaceX's initial EVA suit is relatively simple. They will, to some point, be variants that have been extensively modified of the SpaceX IVA suit design that already exists. These variants may include an enhanced heat management system, an upgraded helmet and visor, and most critically, the incorporation of a lot of mechanical joints throughout the body. As was the case with the early EVA suit built by NASA in the 1960s, SpaceX's first EVA would get supplies, energy, access to information, and a communication system via cables or tethers that linked to the Dragon's life support system. It is going to take some time for SpaceX to design a deployable life-sustaining system that is both safe and as capable as the packs that are used on NASA's EVA suits. EVAs, as well as working on or inspecting the outer part of the Crew Dragon or spacecraft will still be possible for astronauts working for SpaceX or private companies when they wear tethered EVA suits. These capabilities have the potential to save lives in certain crisis situations. Therefore, the top priority for SpaceX will be to ensure that the fundamentals function properly in space and that the suits enable astronauts to complete tasks that call for good tip and limb abilities without instantly exhausting themselves. Isaacman also mentioned that there had been several modifications made to the materials that make up the improved suit in order to better protect astronauts from micrometeoroids as well as orbital debris. These are small, square rocks or space junk debris that could potentially hit a crew member while they are on a mission outside of their spacecraft. This is not reflected in any written form whatsoever. In May of 2022, SpaceX started training private astronauts to participate in the first ever private spacewalk in the history of space flight. The EVA was the primary focus of the training and either the two crew members who were selected to participate or all four candidates were given the opportunity to join the undersea diving and assess EVA suits both submerged in water and inside the Dragon capsule simulation model. Additionally, within the next three months, SpaceX is planning to conduct the first ever private spacewalk in human history. The launch of the first of perhaps three Polaris missions, known as Polaris Dawn, is presently slated to take place as soon as December 2022. This will be the first time in history of space travel that a private individual will go on a spacewalk. After 15 years of fruitless efforts to develop new spacesuits, NASA finally admitted defeat and turned the project over to the private sector so it could focus on other priorities. In the meanwhile, SpaceX is making significant headway in developing its next-generation high-tech spacesuit. And in line with this, an unfavorable audit of the agency's XEMU program was released by the Office of Inspector General of NASA a year ago. The suit was developed with the intention of succeeding the current generation of extravehicular activity suits used by the International Space Station or ISS and for lunar exploration as part of the Artemis program. The OIG's assessment revealed that NASA's XEMU program had fallen behind schedule by a number of years and needed more cash even to reach the revised targets. The lackluster performance was not solely the responsibility of NASA. The fact that Congress continuously failed to achieve the needed financing year after year in the budget was not a favorable indicator for a crew landing on the lunar surface in 2024 or even in 2025 since the year has now passed. NASA did what it does best in the hopes of finding a solution to the problem, which was to offer up the chance for the private sector to provide EVA services for purchase. 
Musk said on his Twitter account that he was prepared to assist with the agency issue even though the procedure being carried out by NASA was still ongoing. Despite the fact that an EVA suit created by SpaceX was simply a rumor at the time, this helped solidify the claim as accurate. When NASA published the winners of the Exploratory Extravehicular Activity Services XEVA's contract, there was no evidence or mention of SpaceX participation. This caused many SpaceX enthusiasts to express their astonishment. It's clear to us why now, as far as we can tell, SpaceX didn't even bother to submit a bid to compete for the NASA spacesuit contract. Just the top two competitors made it. Musk and SpaceX may want to handle everything on their own this time. That is about all there is to cover for today's episode. It would mean a lot to us if you would express your thoughts in the comment box, so please don't forget to do so. Your support is what drives us to produce more engaging material. Thank you so much and we hope to see you again soon.